very good day to you. And it's great to be with you on family time. I want to go straight to the scriptures. You know, so often we talk about everything else, but we don't get back to the word. The Bible says in Psalm 119 and verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So I want to go straight to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah was written about 700 odd years before the birth of Christ. Isn't that amazing? So when, when I read the scripture to you, you must remember that. The Lord has been in heaven for 2,000 years. And this was 700 years before that. So this book that I'm reading you was written about 2,760 years ago. And listen to this. I'm reading from Isaiah chapter 53 and from verse 1. I'm just going to read it. And I want to read the whole chapter to you if I can. Because I really believe that it, we, need, we need to get to know the Word of God, folks. And you know, your children want, want to know the truth. Because it's the truth, only the truth, that will set them free. This is what the Word of God says. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. I want to say to you, my dear friend, right at the outset, that our, our, our Lord didn't come as some great and mighty king, dressed in all his jewelry and finery with a big army. No, the Bible tells us that he'd just be an ordinary person. He was a carpenter, that's correct. That was his trade. For 30 years, he worked as a carpenter in a little town called Nazareth. And then for three years, his ministry changed this whole world. In fact, the whole universe. And it has never been the same again. You know that there's not a man, this is a historical fact, that has walked on the face of this earth who has had as much impact on this world as that man, that carpenter from Nazareth, the Lord Jesus Christ. We go to verse 3. He is despised and rejected by men, even today, by the way. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. And he carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Folks, it was your sin and my sin that put him there. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And he, by his stripes, we have been healed. The pain that the Lord Jesus Christ took on the cross, he says, by my stripes you have been healed. I've seen, I've seen the Lord heal people. Folks, I've prayed for people that have been blind and whose eyes have opened, ears unstopped. People got out of wheelchairs and walked. I've seen it with my own eyes. This is him. And he did it for us. But we like sheep have gone astray. Each one has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Our Heavenly Father allowed Jesus to pay the price for your sin and my sin. That's why I love him so much. I'm free not because I'm a good man. I'm free because I've got a Savior who set me free. Just want to stop there and just say to you that you also, that's up to verse 6, need to start to trust Him. Believe this report because He's a good God. He's for you. He's not against you. And He loves you and He died for you. And most important, He's coming back for you again. So lift up your head. Call unto the Lord. He understands about your pain and your suffering because He's been there. And I want to tell you something now. Your life will be transformed. May the Lord bless you until we meet again on family time. Goodbye. We trust that you have been blessed by today's message. For more information, please visit angusbucken.com.